In this video, we're going to create a click to learn more exercise. So we have some buttons over here on the left that when we click on them, will show different content relating to those buttons. Since we'll be showing many things at once, this background, the text, and the images, we'll want to use layers to group these objects. To create our Click to Learn More exercise, we will need a new page. We can again come down to the flow and right-click on the last page of our lesson and select New Page. Now we want some buttons on our page. So I'll come over to the Objects and select the button object. And if I just click on the page, I'll get a default button at the default size. I'll make this a little bigger. And then I will change the text on the button. To do that, I can just double click on the text and type in some new text. Next, I want to change the style of the button. To do that, I'll select the button and choose the style icon. From here, I can try out some different styles until I find one that looks good to me. This one seems pretty good, so I'll say OK. To create more buttons, I will right click and choose Duplicate. I'll do that a couple times until I have three different buttons. To make this a bit neater, I can select all three objects and use my alignment tools. So I'll use the drop down and choose align left and distribute vertically to make sure they're evenly spaced. Once I have them in place, I can change the text by double clicking. Next, I'll add a little placeholder graphic over here so that it doesn't look so empty. So I'll come over to the image object, add one to my page, and then double click to select the image. Here I have a little triceratops silhouette, so I'll select that. And already it looks a lot better. Now we want to start creating the content that I want to show my learners when they click on the different buttons. I could build all that stuff right here next to the buttons, like a background, text, and an image, as well as the actions to show those objects. It's certainly possible because I can have multiple responses within a single when block. But in order to set up my second action, I'd also need to make sure that I hid all the objects from the first button. And then even more actions to set up my third button. So I would end up with three separate actions, each with nine responses at least. That sounds like a lot of work, and there's got to be a better way. So we no longer need this action or these three objects. Instead, we're going to do something a little bit more efficient. What we're going to do is create new layers. These layers will contain all the objects that I want to show, and then I can simply show or hide the layer, rather than all the objects individually. So if we look over in the cast, we can see that everything I've created so far exists in my base layer. To build my Stegosaurus content, I'm going to add a new layer. So I'll come up to the Add Layer icon, and that will create a new blank layer 1 for me to use. So here I can build my content, and then simply show or hide layer 1. With layer 1 selected, I'll start by building my background. So I'll come over to the shapes and get the rounded rectangle, and I'll make a fairly large one here. Notice that the items in my base layer are still visible, but grayed out. This helps me position things. Next, I'll change the style of this background. So I'll select the style icon.
and I'll choose this style here with a bit of a drop shadow and say OK. Next, I'll create a couple of text objects and bring an image in. So we'll start with the text objects, and I'll come to my text object and draw one up here. And this will be my title. So I'll make this bigger and bold. And then I'll add a second text object for my body text. And here I'll paste in text that I've copied from the project files document. And finally, I'll bring in an image. And here I'll choose the Stegosaurus scale image. And I'll move everything up using my arrow keys. And make this background a little bit bigger so that everything fits. So this is looking pretty good. So over in the cast, I will rename this layer. To do that, I can just double click on the name. And I'll type in stego layer and hit enter. Since this looks so great, I'm going to go ahead and duplicate it as a starting point for my next layer. So I'll right click on this one and choose duplicate. And now I have two layers the original, and the copy. I'll update the copy to deal with my Triceratops. So I'll start by updating the name, double click, and we'll call it Trike Layer. And I'll update the text and the image. And this one is looking pretty good, so again, I'm going to set up my third layer by duplicating an existing one. So I'll right click and choose Duplicate. And this will become my both layer. And from here, I'll update the text and the images. In order to navigate back to a different layer, I can simply select it in the cast, and then I will see it on the page. Note that the default behavior of these layers are that they are set to show one at a time. That means if I show one layer, it will hide the others. Over here in the properties, I could change that if I wanted to show multiple layers simultaneously. But in this case, the default behavior is exactly what I want. I don't have to micromanage hiding and showing layers. Also note that the base layer is always shown in addition to these other layers. So my base with these three buttons are always going to be available. And these other layers are going to come and go based on what is selected. You can tell a base layer by its name, but if you change the name, the icon is also a little bit different too. It's a little darker to indicate that it's permanent. It's also always a bottom layer. All of these layers live within what is called a stack. As I build more and more complex pages, I can have multiple stacks with multiple layers each. But in this case, we'll just have one stack with the base, and these three layers that are shown when the learner clicks on the different buttons. If the transparency of these different layers is distracting, or you wish to see the base and a different layer at the same time so that you can line things up, you can use the Toggle Layer Transparency button. This will show the base and the current layer at full transparency. 
If I had multiple stacks, or objects on my master, those would also no longer be dimmed. We'll leave it off for now. So let's get to creating those actions. The first thing I need to do is click on my first button, and I will add the when stegosaurus on click action to my action canvas. And remember, the flyout panel is shown above the action canvas below. Whatever I select on the page dictates what is shown in the flyout panel. So if I select a different object, I get the flyout for that object. If I need to hide the flyout panel, I can click out here in the action canvas to hide it. And I can always get the flyout panel back either by selecting the object again or by selecting the first action tab. So I have the when portion. Next, I need the do portion. So I need to select my layer in order to show it here. I can select objects on the page that are within a layer, but in order to select the layer itself, I need to come over here to the cast and select it. Once I have the layer selected, I can see the action blocks associated with the layer. So I want to show my stego layer, so we'll drag that onto our canvas and snap it into the action. We'll do something similar for our other layers. In this case, I'll start with my trike layer, and I'll grab the show block. And now I need the when block. So I want to show my trike layer, and when do I want to show it? When my triceratops button is clicked. So I'll select the triceratops button, and I'll come over here and choose the when triceratops on click, and I will combine those two blocks. To create the third action, I can right-click on an existing when block and choose Duplicate. This will create a whole new action with the same trigger and response objects. From here, I can use these drop-downs to select a different button, in this case the Both, and a different layer, in this case the Both layer. Now we'll preview it and see how it works. Here I can see the three buttons and my placeholder. They all exist on the base. And when I click on one of these buttons, we'll start with the Triceratops. The Triceratops layer is shown with all the objects that are in it. And so I can just navigate through this using these buttons. Because the stack behavior is show one layer at a time, when I click on a different layer, the other one is automatically hidden. Meanwhile, the base layer is always there. And with that, we're done with this page. In the next video, we'll spruce up our lesson by creating a lesson-wide interface with back and next buttons, as well as a couple of pop-up resources.